Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, just two quick announcements. If anyone is blocking anyone's driveway or double parking, we're asking you to move your car and not to, to block anyone's driveway or to double park in the area. Um, with regards to the, our question and answer for the sisters, you can send your question to 917-600-3798. Nine one seven six zero zero three seven nine eight. Text your question to that number, inshallah.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in uh, Firstly, we would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has gathered us here again to benefit and to learn insha'Allah ta'ala our deen and also we would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has blessed us with having our sheikh with us from Kuwait and given us this opportunity, inshallah, to benefit from his knowledge. And also, we would like to welcome, firstly, our Sheikh Abdullah Ashuraika, and our guest, our, our other guest on the head table. And we would like to welcome everyone who has made the effort to come out and benefit from this program, inshallah ta'ala. We know we are a little bit late, so without any further delay, I will put you on, insha'Allah ta'ala, to Brother Zahir, insha'Allah ta'ala, to commence with the program. Jazakumullah khairan. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters عن كثير ابن قيس رضي الله تعالى عنه قال كنت جالسا مع أبي درداء رضي الله تعالى عنه في مسجد في دمشق أو بمسجد في دمشق. he said كثير من قيس رضي الله تعالى he said that he was sitting with Abu Darda another great companion. he was sitting with him in Syria in دمشق. فأتاه رجل a man came to him and he said يا أبا دردا رضي الله تعالى عنه جئتك من المدينة من مدينة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم that I have come to you from the Medina from the city of Prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام and I came to you to listen from you directly because I heard that you are you are you are narrating a hadith from رسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام a hadith which I want to hear from you directly. My brothers and sisters. So here a man comes from the city of Prophet Muhammad والسلام, Medina al Ulama, Medina al Sahaba, right? City where there are so many scholars. So he comes to Syria to meet another companion. Because that companion, Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala an, he is narrating a hadith from Rasulullah and he wants to get that chain directly from him. So he said, I have come to you for this. He said, did you come for anything else? Is there any other business dealing you have to do? Is there anything else you have to do? Is there anything else you... you, you you need to take care of while you are, while you are here for uh, visiting uh, Syria or Dimashq? He said, no, I only, ha I only have come to listen from you directly the hadith of Rasulullah which you have heard directly from Rasulullah. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters, it is almost, perhaps even more than 800 miles. Be the distance between Medina 
Medina to Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Syria and Dimashq, about around 800 miles, or perhaps more than that. Subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, because he wanted to hear directly from the companion the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what is that hadith? Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman sahhalallahu la is a path seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning seeking knowledge whoever takes a path seeking knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make his path to Jannah easy for him or for her my brothers and sisters virtues of knowledge and your existence right now in this blessed masjid Masjidu Ahl al-Qur'ani wa Sunnah is a proof that you all have come here to learn and to hear the ayat of Allah and to hear the ahadith of Rasulullah. فَمَرْحَبًا بِكُمْ يَا مَعَشَرَةُ اللَّهِ الْعِلْمِ فَمَرْحَبًا بِكُمْ وَأَهْلًا وَسَحْلًا وَمَرْحَبًا بِكُمْ So we welcome you all, my dear brothers and sisters. We welcome every single one of you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes our path to Jannah easier for us. Ameen, Allahumma ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, before we proceed with our shaykh, after thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would like to thank the administration of Masjid Ahl al-Quran wa Sunnah for working so hard. And at the head of them, our beloved brother Tahir, Hafizahullah ta'ala wa May Allah preserve him. And the entire board and all of the brothers and sisters who are assisting to spread the knowledge and who are assisting to, alhamdulillah, call to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah azza wa jal make it easy for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in their efforts. My dear brothers and sisters, I don't want to take too long where we are already late. Inshallah ta'ala, I would ask our honorable sheikh to give a small, perhaps five, ten minutes, nasiha, and then we will start with the questions of the sisters, insha'Allah ta'ala. Fal'an ma'a fadilat al-shaykh, al-doktor Dayfun al-Ghali, Dr. Abdullah Shuraika, hafizahullah ta'ala wa li yuwajjih bi nasiha, insha'Allah, li khamsa daqaiq taqariban, insha'Allah, thumma natajjih ila al-asila bi-ithnillah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله <تصفيق> صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فأرحب بإخواني وأخواتي الكرام في هذا المسجد المبارك الذي نسأل الله جل في علاه أن يبارك في جهود القائمين عليه ونجعلنا وإياهم وإياكم من الهداة المهتدين غير الضالين ولا المضلين The Sheikh Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he started after the Khutbah al Hajjah by welcoming the brothers and the sisters in this blessed masjid. And he asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make the, to accept the efforts of those who are responsible for this masjid and this gathering and to make them and us and you all from Al Hudat al Muhtadeen, those individuals who are guided in themselves and who bring guidance to others. <laughs> من أعظم نعم الله على الإنسان أن يوفقه لاعتناق الإسلام. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said my brothers and sisters or my noble brothers and sisters from the greatest blessings of Allah سبحانه وتعالى upon a person is that he guide them to Islam. ولا يعرف حقيقة هذه النعمة نعمة الإسلام. إلا من درس وعرف الإسلام بحق. And no one truly knows the value of this blessing, the blessing of Islam, 
except those who study and examine the truth. فمن عرف الإسلام وما جاء به من توحيد لله واتباع للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والتحلي بمكارم الأخلاق وحب الخير للناس والتعاون على الخير مع الناس عرف حقيقة هذه النعمة. The Sheikh Hafizah Allah Taala it escaped me some of what the Sheikh said Hafizah Allah. أقول من درس الإسلام بحق وعرف ما جاء به محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم من دعوة للتوحيد ونهي عن الشرك ودعوة للعدل ونهي عن الظلم ودعوة للحق ونهي عن الباطل ودعوة للصدق ونهي عن الكذب ودعوة إلى الرحمة ونهي عن العنف والقسوة يعرف حقيقة الإسلام. So the Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said so the one who studies what Islam has brought from the truth and that which the Prophet the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم has brought with or came with from the calling to the توحيد and the prohibition of shirk and the calling to justice and fairness and the prohibition against transgression or, or oppression and the calling to honesty and the forbiddance of lying and the callings to uh, justice and the forbiddance of uh, transgression again here or uh, or harshness and uh, rudeness then they understand what Islam has come with from the truth well Islam and Islam encourages that one learns what it's come with and that an individual obtain knowledge. And every time an individual's knowledge about Islam increases, then likewise his levels with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase and likewise his value increases. أنعم على نبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بنعم كثيرة جدا في الدين والدنيا. And Allah Azza wa Jal He blessed His Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم with numerous blessings in this deen and as well as in this dunya. ولكنه سبحانه ما أمره أن يسأله الزيادة من شيء إلا من العلم. In spite of this, he did not command him that he ask for a request or that he request an increasement in anything other than knowledge. So he, subhanahu, he said to him, and say, O my Lord, increase me in knowledge. And for this reason, we find that Allah, جل, he raised the status of the scholars. And he commanded with knowledge in that one obtain it. And if there was nothing else in this matter other than his statement وسلم, that was reported by a shaykhan that statement whomever Allah wants good for him he allows him to understand the religion. بل إن الله عز وجل جعل مثل هذه المجالس مثل مجلسنا هذا الذي يحصل فيه العلم جعله من أفضل الأعمال وأجل العبادات. Instead, Allah Azza wa Jalla has made the likes of these gatherings, these gatherings that we are in right now, in which knowledge is sought from the best and most virtuous actions of worship. وسأذكر لكم أربع فضائل فقط لمثل هذه المجالس. And I'm going to mention for you four, only four. Benefits from the likes of these gatherings. يقول صلى الله عليه وسلم كما كما في صحيح الإمام مسلم من حديث أبي صالح عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentions as is found in the book of Muslim from the hadith of Abi Salih and Abi Hurayra رضي الله تعالى عنه. ومجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله. And no group of people gather together in a home from the homes of Allah. يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم. Reciting the book of Allah and studying it together amongst themselves. 
ومدارسة كتاب الله تنقسم إلى قسمين يا إخواني. In the studying of the book of Allah amongst a group, a group amongst themselves, it is divided into two categories. القسم الأول مدارسة حروف القرآن يعني تعلم التجويد والتلاوة والأداء. The first of them is to study the letters of the Quran, i.e. to study the etiquette of tajweed and how to recite the words of the Quran. والقسم الثاني مدارسة حدود القرآن وأحكامه العقائد والتفسير والفقه والحديث وهكذا. And the second of them is to study the limits or the, def- the things that the Quran has brought with its meanings, like the studying of the aqidah and the tafsir and Islamic law and hadith and like this. وما اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم إلا واحد غشيتهم الرحمة. So no group of people comes together in the house in the house from the houses of Allah to recite the Quran يتلون to recite the book of Allah to study it amongst themselves except that the first of them لا غشيتهم الرحمة. يعني تغشاهم رحمة الله تبارك وتعالى. Except that the mercy of Allah Azawajal encompasses them, i.e. it involves them and includes them all. يرحمهم الله بواسع رحمته بسبب حضورهم لمثل هذه المجالس. Allah Azawajal, he will show mercy to them all with his vast mercy due to their participating in the likes of these gatherings. الثانية قال وحفتهم الملائكة. The second of them is that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that the angels surround them. الملائكة من أطهر مخلوقات الله سبحانه وتعالى. The angels are from the most pure of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وهي من أعظم مخلوقاته جل في علاه. And they're from the greatest of his creations, he the one who is exalted in his highness. فتأمل كيف أن الله أمرهم أن يحفوا من يحضر مثل هذه المجالس بطهارتهم ونزاهتهم وعظمهم إكراما لهم على حرصهم على تعلم العلم. So consider how Allah Azza wa Jal commanded them to surround and encompass those who participated in the likes of these gatherings with their purity and their uh, special clean, clean quality and their greatness in spite of he commanded them to encompass those who participate in these gatherings. الأولى قال غشيتهم الرحمة والثانية قال حفتهم الملائكة والثالثة قال ونزلت عليهم السكينة. So the first of those qualities is that he said that rahma encompasses them, and the second of them is that the angels surround them, and the third of them is that tranquility descends upon them. هذه السكينة هي الطمأنينة طمأنينة القلب واليقين وانشراح الصدر. This uh, sakina or this tranquility is the comfort or the relaxed nature that one finds in his heart and in his chest and the the. The, the comfort that one finds in his heart and his chest and yeah and this sakin or this sakin or tranquility the first time it descended in Islam it descended on some of the noble companions and they are the people that are known as ashab al-shajara or the companions of the tree, those who gave that bay'ah or that pledge of obedience that is known as bay'atul ridwan. الَّذِينَ قَالَ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Those whom Allah Azawajal, he said about them, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ Allah is indeed pleased with those who give you the pledge of obedience under the tree. فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ So he knows, what, so he knew what was in their hearts. فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ And he sent down upon them this sakina, or a sakina. وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا And he gave them the reward of a close victory. لا بد أن تفكر جيدا وتتأمل جيدا. It's necessary that you ponder well and think carefully in a good way about كيف أن السكينة التي نزلت على أصحاب بيعة الرضوان تنزل عليك بسبب حضورك مثل هذه المجالس. How this same type of sakina that was sent down upon those who participated in this pledge of obedience known as بيعة الرضوان, how that same type of sakina descends upon you when you participate in the likes of these gatherings. كم ممكن أن يدفع الإنسان من أمواله من أجل أن تغشاه رحمة الله تبارك وتعالى. 
So how much would a person spend or how much is a person willing to spend in order to, uh, to get the benefit that the mercy of Allah encompass him? Wallahi, law dafa' al-insan kulla ma yamlik min ajil an taghshah rahmatullah sa'a lakana thalika khayran azim. If a person was to spend everything that he owns and possess in order to have the mercy of Allah encompass him for only a moment or only an hour, that would be an abundance of good. ولو أنفق كل ما يملك من أجل أن تحفه ملائكة الله لما كان ذلك كثيرا. And if he was to spend everything that he owned and possessed in order to get the angels to surround him, that wouldn't be deemed to be too much. ولو أنفق كل ما يملك من أجل أن تنزل عليه السكينة من الله ما كان ذلك كثيرا. And if he was to spend everything that he owns and possessed in order to get the سكينة of Allah to descend upon him, that wouldn't be considered too much. يا إخوة كرام لا يراد منا إلا حضور مثل هذه المجالس من أجل أن تغشانا رحمة الله وتحفنا الملائكة وتنزل علينا السكينة. Oh my noble brothers, it's not wanted from us anything more other than other than to participate in the likes of these gatherings in order that the mercy of Allah might uh, uh, envelop us and that the angels might encompass and surround us in, in order that the Sakina might descend upon us. These are three of the virtues of participating in the likes of these gatherings. And the fourth virtue is greater than all of them altogether. وهي التي قال فيها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وذكرهم الله في من عنده سبحانه وتعالى. And it is the one that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said about and Allah عز وجل mentions them and those who are with him amongst those who are with him. الآن الآن أنت وأنت يذكركم الله في من عنده من أجل فقط حضور هذه المجالس. So he said, you, my sister, and you, my brother, right now, right now, this moment, Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning you amongst those who are with him for your participation in the like of this gathering. How much would a person spend in order to get Allah Azza wa Jal to mention him amongst those who are with him and that high council or that high sitting and gathering. Wallahi, ya ikhwani, la yufarrito fi majalis al-dhikri wal-ilm illa man kana mahruman wal-iyadu billah. Wallahi, my brothers, nobody is negligent and disregards the gatherings of remembering Allah and knowledge except the individual who was actually and truly prevented. Hurima min kulli hadhi al-khayrat. He's prevented from all of this good. ومن الخيرات كذلك لمثل هذه المجالس أن الله يقول لأصحابها قوموا مغفور لكم بعد انتهاء مجالسهم. Indeed, from the good of the likes of these gatherings as well as that Allah Azza wa Jal He says to those who participate in them, stand up, forgiven for you all of your sins for your participation in the likes of these gatherings. لذلك علينا أن نجتهد في هذه الأيام بحضور هذه المجالس والصبر عليها وتقديمها على كل ما سواها. And so for that reason, it's important for us to give great effort to participate in the likes of these gatherings and to uh, have to seek them out and to have patience during them. وأن نحرص على السؤال عما نحتاج تعلمه من أمور الدين. And that we give effort or diligence in selecting the questions that we need for the affairs of our religion. Islam Islam encourages that a person ask questions and learn. And we, the Sheikh is saying about himself with Allah's permission, the things that we know the answer to will answer them. And that which we don't know. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يوفقنا وإياكم لما يحبه ويرضاه وأن يعيننا وإياكم على ذكره وشكره وحسن عبادته. آمين. The Sheikh Abu Abdullah Taala he said we ask Allah Azza wa Jal that he give us success to that which he is loves and is pleased with. And now. نترك الآن المجال. أحسن الله إليكم وجزاكم الله خير مبارك الله فيكم والآن إن شاء الله نبدأ. Uh, we will start with the questions of the sisters first, insha'Allah. 
And if the sisters have more questions, they can continue to bring it down with Allah Ta'ala or send it down uh, through Brother uh, Tahir and uh, our beloved Imam uh, uh, Shamir. Jazakallah Khairan. Um, <coughs> so the question it says, what do we do if we missed fasting before we started practicing deen? And also missed while practicing deen years after uh, due to pregnancy perhaps in menses because we didn't know the ruling for making it up within the year. وكيف يكون القضاء قبل مجيء رمضان آخر يعني لعلها تسأل عن الفقه إذا فات واحد إذا فاته سيام بالنسبة هل هل يجب عليه القضاء قبل المجيء رمضان آخر اللي هي تركت يعني هي تركت أياما عن عمد عن تعمد لا ليس على العلم نعم عن جهل نعم نعم مثل هذه الأخت الله يحفظها ويبارك فيها عليها أن تصوم هذه الأيام التي أفطرتها من الآن لا ربما لا لا تدرك ذلك تصوم إن شاء الله بعد رمضان القادم بحول الله وقوته من أهل العلم من قال أنه يكفيها الصيام فقط أن تقضي هذه الأيام ومنهم من قال أنها تقضي وتطعم عن كل يوم مسكينة وتطعم عن كل يوم مسكينة نعم والله أعلم The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said in response to what the brother translated from the question he said that uh, upon this sister is that she fast the days that are in front of her these days that are coming and perhaps it won't be possible for her to make up these days that have missed her before the coming of this Ramadan so upon her is that she fast the days that are in front of her and then from the scholars of those that say she makes up the days that she missed Simply that, that she simply makes up the days that she missed, and from them are those that say upon her is to make up each day that she missed, and along with it, feed a poor person. And tutrina miskina, that she feed a poor person along with every day that she missed. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. Ahsanallahu alaykum wa barakallahu feekum. Hadi sa'ila taqool, hal yujuzu lil mar'a an taskun ma'a nisa' bidun mahram, ma'a nisa' adhunu min al-a'ila aw ghayru al-a'ila. Uh, the question is, is it permissible for a woman, for a sister to live with other sisters without a mahram? إذا لم يتيسر لها أن تسكن مع محرمها فلا بأس بذلك إن شاء الله بشرط أن تحرص على السكن مع النساء الصالحات الخيرات والله تعالى The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said in response to the question that if the woman is not able to live amongst her maharam or those who are her relatives in her maharam, then inshallah there's no harm with her living amongst a group of women. There's no harm with her living amongst a group of women. Uh, there's no harm with her living amongst a group of women, but she should inshallah try to seek out a group of women who are salihat, who are righteous, and are mutadayinat, who practice their religion. Uh, and Allah knows best. Ahsanallahu alaykum wa jazakum Allah khaira. هذه سائلة تقول هل يجوز تزيين البيوت لرمضان والعيد للدخول السرور عند الأطفال؟ Is it permissible to decorate your home for Ramadan or Eid for the purpose of the children? I guess to make the children happy. أفيدونا بارك الله فيكم. تزيين البيوت تزيين البيوت في رمضان والعيد. لا تزيين 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 البيوت. النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صام تسع رمضانات يعني تسع سنوات هو وأصحابه الكرام رضي الله عنهم وأرضاه وصام بعده التابعون وتابع التابعون ولم يكن أحد منهم يزين البيوت ولا يضع علامة الهلال ولا غير ذلك وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لا بأس أن ندخل السرور على الأطفال والصغار 
والكبار هذا مطلوب في كل حال كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم لما سئل عن أي العمل أفضل قال سرور تدخله على قلب المسلم ولكن هذا السرور لا يكون عن طريق الأمور المحدثة في الدين والله تعالى أعلم The Sheikh Hafizahu Allah Ta'ala, he said in response to the question that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he fasted nine Ramadanat, he fasted nine Ramadans. And after him the Sahaba, they fasted Ramadan. And the Tabi'un and the Atba'a Tabi'un, they all fasted Ramadan. And it's not known from any of them that they decorated their homes for Ramadan. Right, it's not known from any of them that they decorated their homes for Ramadan. As far as entering happiness upon the hearts of the children, then this is something to enter happiness upon the children or the equals, the family members and the elders, then this is something that is matlufi kulliha. This is something that is requested or recommended in every circumstance. This is based on the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu when he was asked what action is the best, he said, it khalis surur, entering happiness upon the hearts of those that you love. But it should not be done with umurun muhdatha. It should not be done with innovated matters. And Allah knows best. أحسن الله إليكم وهذه سائلة تسأل هل يجوز للمرأة الحائض الدخول في بالمساجد؟ The sister asked about menstruating women if they can enter the masjid. نعم. الصحيح يا أخواتي الكريمات من أقوال أهل العلم رحمهم الله أنه يجوز للمرأة الحائض أن تدخل المسجد للحاجة مثل حاجة الدروس أو غيرها والأدلة على ذلك كثيرة من سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم منها قوله لعائشة في الحج وافعلي ما يفعل الحاج غير أن لا تطوفي بالبيت يعني فقط منعها من الطواف بالبيت وقوله افعلي ما يفعل الحاج من المعلوم أن الحاج يجلس في, في المسجد الحرام ومنها كذلك قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم لعائشة ناولين الخمرة من المسجد فقالت إني حائض فقال إن حيضتك ليست, ليست في يدك وأما حديث أم عطية حديث أم عطية لما قالت أمرنا أن نخرج النساء والعواتق والحيض إلى صلاة العيد ويعتزل وتعتزل الحيض المصلى فالمقصود يعتزلنا الصلاة يعني لا يصلين العيد ليس المقصود أن يعتزلنا المكان الذي يصلى فيه لا الصحيح أن المقصود هنا هو الصلاة نفسها كما قال تعالى خذوا زينتكم عند كل مسجد يعني عند كل صلاة والله أعلم جملة جملة كما تعرف الشيخ أمرنا أن نخرج العواتق والحيض لكن كلمة التي قبلها العواتق والحيض لكن قبلها فاتن. أمرنا أن نخرج النساء و... النساء العواتق والحيض The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى He said uh, as far as what is correct or as far as that which is uh, more accurate in this issue my noble sister is that it is permissible for the woman to remain in the masjid for classes and other benefits in this nature. Uh, and the evidence or the adilla upon this are numerous. From them is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said to her, do everything that the hajj does except don't make tawaf around the home, i.e. the Kaaba. Don't make tawaf around the bait. And it is known that from the things that the person making hajj does is that he goes into the masjid al-haram. And so the Prophet ﷺ allowed her to do everything the hajj does except making tawaf around the, the bait. Likewise, the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to her, Now will ni hand me this mat, now will ni al-khumra, right? Hand me this mat into the masjid. And the Prophet was in the masjid when this happened and Aisha handed him this mat. And she said that verily I am on my menses. He said, indeed, your menses isn't in your hand. And likewise, uh, but as far as the hadith of Ummi Atiyah, the, the hadith that is known where she said we were commanded to expel or put out the women who were uh, upon their menses uh, from the masjid and that no menstruating woman should observe our musalla. 
then what is meant by this here, the word musalla in the masjid here, is the actual action of performing salat. That they should not participate in the salat itself. Not the actual place, but the actual action itself. Like the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, خُدُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدِ Take your adornments to every masjid, i.e. in every salat itself. And Allah knows best. أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكُمْ وَجَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا a uh, sister asked, she was given a specific fatwa stating that we should not keep contact with the father because he isn't attributed to the child or there has been sexual abuse. Would it be haram for us to continue the relationship? If it is haram, what would this parent need to do in order to make it permissible for contact to take place again? Uh, غير <تصفيق> 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 نعم. ما ندري اللي والدتها أنا أنا أقول طيب خلينا نجاوب إن شاء الله طيب. نعم ال ال الاختلاف الدين اختلاف الدين لا ينفي النسب نعم the Sheikh Hamidullah Taala he said in response to what was uh, able to be translated from the question he said the differing of the religion does not negate lineage or does not connect does not negate family relation. يعني لو أن الإنسان أسلم ووالده غير مسلم يبقى هذا والده وأبل له. So, for example, if a person accepts Islam and his father or their father doesn't accept Islam, this person still remains their parent and their father. ليس هذا فحسب بل يجب عليه أن يبر والده ويحسن إليه. And it's not just that, and that's it. Instead, it's necessary upon him that he show righteousness to his parent and that he does good to them or for them. And that he accompany them in this dunya in a way that is ma'roof. As Allah or Allah Ta'ala said regarding the two parents, and if the two of them try their hardest to get you to give me a partner, that which you have no knowledge about, then do not obey them in that. And accompany them in this dunya in a way that is ma'roof. وإبراهيم عليه السلام كان يقول لوالده آزر رغم أنه ما كان مسلما والده كان يقول له يا أبتي. In Ibrahim عليه الصلاة والسلام he used to say to his father آزر even though his father was not a Muslim he used to say to his father يا أبتي and this statement in Arabic is a way of showing compassion and closeness يا أبتي. ونوح كان يقول لابنه الكافر كان يقول له يا يا بني يركب معنا. And Nuh, alayhi salatu was salam, he used to say to his son, and his son was a kafir as well, Ya Bunay, oh my small close son, another way of saying something with affection in Arabic, Urkum ma'ana, ride upon this boat with us. When Abiyuna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a kana yaqul li ammihi abi talib, qala lahu ya am, ma'an abba talib lam yakun muslim. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say to his uncle Abu Talib, even though Abu Talib wasn't a Muslim, he said to him, Ya Am, oh my uncle. Even though his uncle at that time wasn't a Muslim. So the differing in religion does not negate the cutting off of family relation. And then there still remains the matter with regards to the question of the noble sister. نحن فهمنا أنه بسبب اختلاف الدين هي تسأل ربما أن والدها غير مسلم. And so from what we've understood is that the the reason she's asking this question is about the separation or the difference in the religion. Maybe he's not a Muslim. نعم. ففي هذه الحال إذا كان في بقائها معه المصلحة أرجح تبقى معه. أما إن لم يكن كذلك بتغادر. So in this circumstance, the circumstance of him not being a Muslim. 
if there is a benefit that is more preponderant to be gained in remaining with him, then remain with him. And if there is not one, then do not remain with him. أما إذا كان السؤال بسبب أن هذا الأب هو والدها بطريقة غير شرعية يعني والد غير شرعي لها. And if the question is based upon the fact that this parent or this father is one who is on a way that is un-Islamic. He is a father that has become a father in a way that is un-Islamic and not legislated. Like as if something had occurred from fornication in the past. And in, in, in this circumstance, she should not remain with him. ولا يمنع أن تحسن إليه يعني في التعامل من بعيد لبعيد لكن لا تبقى معه. And it doesn't prevent her from doing good for him in a way that there's some distance between them, but she should not remain with him. إلا إذا كانت مضطرة لذلك. Unless she is forced by necessity to do such. كأن تكون لا تجد لها مأوى غير هذا المأوى. Like as if she has no other place of refuge or place of residence besides with this individual. والله أعلم. الله نوس بس أحسن الله إليكم وبارك الله فيكم نعم the question is what is the ruling on not paying on not paying for a medical bill if the individual did not consent to the treatment السؤال سائل يسأل ما حكم عدم دفع الفاتورة المستشفى إذا كان العلاج أن غير موافق أن غير موافق غير موافقة يعني هم عالجوه وهو لم يوافق على هذا العلاج أو لم يطلب نعم كأن هذا زاهر يعني من السواق نعم الواقع أنه يجب عليه أن يدفع هذه الفاتورة حتى ولو كان هو لم يطلب مثل لو أن إنسانا تعرض لحادث وأغمي عليه ودخل في غيبوبة فتم علاجه في المستشفى دون أن يطلب لكن هم أنقذوه كذلك يجب عليه أن يدفع الفاتورة إذا طلبت منه والله أعلم. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said it is necessary or wajib upon this person that he pay this bill even if he didn't request it, the 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 opera or the the treatment. Like for example, if somebody was in an accident, a car accident, and they brought him to the hospital and he was unconscious, and so they saved his life while he was unconscious. In spite of this, he has to pay this bill even though he didn't request this service. When they saved him, and Allah knows best. أحسن الله إليكم وجزاكم الله خيرا. Next question, sister said, or she wrote, I was going through some difficult time, and one day I heard a voice saying, "Be patient with your Lord's command, and don't be like the companion of the whale." Is this expression like the given to the mother of Musa? تقول سائلة أنها كانت تمر من أيام ضيقة عليها وفي يوم ما سمعت صوت تقول صوت يقول فاصبر لحكم ربك ولا تكن كصاحب الحوت فهل هذا مثل الوحي في قوله تعالى وأوحينا إلى أم موسى نعم هذا تذكير من الله للإنسان لا يكون وحيا ولكن مثل ما يحصل معنا جميعا أحيانا نعم شيخ the Sheikh Hamidullah Ta'ala, he said, this type of event is what is known as like Allah reminding an individual, and it's not considered to be wahi, as what occurs with all of us sometimes. Like you might be passing through a place and you hear a certain ayat and it draws your attention. وكأنها تخاطبك أنت. and it's as if it was speaking to you directly. لموقف يعنيك أنت يعني يحصل لك في 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 نفس الوقت. for a circumstance that is exclusive and specific to you that is related to you at this time. وأحيانا يأتيك التذكير من خلال الآيفون أو من خلال الهواتف. and sometimes this reminder might come to you by way of the iPhone or by way of your phone. يصلك مقطع فيه قرآن أو آية مكتوبة. it will come to you a a clip or something that has in it. A section of Quran or some Quran being recited, or hadith on the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or some hadith upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or moa'idanafi'a anta bihaja laha, or some reminder that is beneficial that you were in need of.
لا تظن أن هذا حصل عن طريق العبث بل هذا بتقدير الله عز وجل So don't think that this is something that happened by pure chance and, and circumstance instead this is a, according to the qadr or the decree of Allah عز وجل وهذه الآية وصلتك في هذا المكان وفي هذا الزمان وفي هذه الحال لتذكرك بإذن الله تعالى And this ayat occurred in this place at this time and this moment or this circumstance to remind you والقرآن أحيانا يكون تسلية للمؤمن And the Quran sometimes serves as a comfort or a tesli, something that brings comfort at hard times for the believer. ويصبره. And it encourages him or it, it drives him to patience. ويثبت فؤاده. And it establishes and makes firm his thoughts. ولذلك كان الله يقص على نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم من أخبار وقصص الأنبياء السابقين تسلية له وتصبيرا له وتثبيتا لفؤاده عليه الصلاة والسلام. And like this, Allah Azza wa Jalla used to mention the stories of the prophets of old to the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم as a form of تسلية to him, as a form of bringing him comfort, and as a way of driving him to patience, and as a way of uh, firming up for him his thoughts and his, his mind. And Allah knows best. Uh, the question, uh, the sister asked, ruling of eating rana cheese from unknown, uh, from unknown sources. Uh, التفاح والبرتقال وكل الأغذية التي لا تحتاج لتذكية حتى ولو كانت مصدورة مجهولة المصدر والله أعلم. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said there's no harm in eating cheese or apples or oranges for that matter or any food substance that does not require slaughtering even if it comes from an unknown source and Allah تعالى knows best. وهنا تنبيه بعد إذن أخي الشيخ زاهد الله يحفظه. And here is a request after Sheikh Zahid's permission. تأتينا أحيانا أسئلة. Sometimes it comes to us questions. أن بعض الناس يرغب في الإسلام يرغب في اعتناق الإسلام. Some people are interested in Islam or interested in accepting Islam. لكن يكون عنده ذنب أو معصية لا يريد تركها. But they have certain sins or actions or actions of disobedience. That they don't wish to give up. مثلاً أن يكون على علاقة محرمة مع امرأة مثلاً. For example, he might have a relationship, a impermissible relationship with a certain woman. أو تكون المرأة على علاقة محرمة أيضاً. Or this woman might have an impermissible relationship as well. فلا ولا شك أن هذا الفعل لا يجوز في الإسلام. And there's no doubt that this type of action is not permissible in Islam. لكن كونه يسلم. ويبقى من عصاة المسلمين خير له من أن يبقى على الكفر وعلى ملة غير الإسلام. But the fact that he would accept Islam and be a disobedient Muslim is better for him that he remain outside of Islam. والإسلام بإذن الله سيقوده إلى الطهارة وإلى العفة وإلى الفضيلة. And Islam will drive him and push him or lead him. Islam will lead him to tahara. It will lead him to cleanliness. Into ifa, into chastity, into becoming a good Muslim. Allah knows best. Thakum Allah khairan wa hasan Allah alaykum. Next question from the sisters. Uh, she says that she has difficulty fasting because it causes her to be overwhelmed, dizzy. She has many days to make up from many years. Uh, what is your advice? Taqriban shift the sawal al awal. Taqul an alayha yani soom Ramadan. نصيحتي للأخت إذا كان عليها أيام ماضية يشق عليها لكبر سنها أو لمرض أو يصيبها صداع شديد في رأسها لا تقدر معها على الصوم إذا كانت مصابة بهذا المرض المزمن الصداع يعني مزمن يعني مستمر ففي هذه الحال تطعم عن كل يوم أفطرته مسكينا واحدا والله أعلم. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said regarding this woman and the brother translated the question and then some clarification was given. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said that this woman if she can't fast because she has this suda al muzmina this chronic condition of headaches 
that are continuous. She can't fast because of it. Then this, in this circumstance, she feeds for every day. She broke her fast, a poor person. And Jazakumullah Khairan. The next question also connected to the same uh, topic or same issue. If, is the fasting of a person not accepted? Is the fasting of a person not accepted unless they made up previous years? Uh, uh, Allah, yeah, the <coughs> حين يكون الجو باردا لا تحت يعني لا تشعر بالعطش ويكون النهار قصيرا لا بأس إن شاء الله. The Sheikh Habibullah Allah Taala he said that uh, no her psalm her fasting is accepted but she has to make up uh, if a person miss fast they have to make up and even if they make up in the winter months when it's not extremely hard and they won't be affected by thirst to such an extent they they have to make up but her fasting is accepted. Before the, the fasting that she missed is made up. أريد أن أقول لكم سرا يا إخوان. أريد أن أقول لهم سرا. No. The Sheikh Habib Allah Taala he said I want to mention to you all like a secret benefit or a, a subtle benefit. وأرجو أن لا يضحك علينا. And I hope that you all don't laugh at me. أول مرة التقيت بالأخ عبد الحكيم. The first. No. The first time I met the brother Abdul Hakim, he's talking about me. في عام 2012. In the year 2012. وهو يعني أخ أحبه في الله كثيرا. The Sheikh Habib Allah Taala he said he's a brother that I love abundant. زارنا في الكويت. He visited us in Kuwait. وكان يترجم الدروس جزاه الله خير. And he used to translate the lessons. ثم التقينا بعد ذلك في كولورادو. No no. The Sheikh Habib Allah Taala he says and then we met likewise after that in Colorado. 2017. In the year 2017, no, no, no. <laughs> and we met, we went to, uh, uh, let's see this, Jibal al Roki. No, 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 is that I used to be big, very big, like the brother is now. We'll say that I used to be fat, like the brother's fat now. And he was very, he was much more skinnier than me. <laughs> he said, "So now, what is the circumstance? Look at me now. Look at him now." Alhamdulillah. Alaykum wa jazakum Allah khairan. Barakallah fikum. Uh, the next question is, is it okay for a woman, for a sister who does not wear niqab to, do, to wear makeup? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> يجوز لها أن تضع ذلك إذا كانت عند النساء أو عند محارمها. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said in response to the question that the the woman who does not wear hijab it's not permissible for her to wear these blushes and make and make ups that will negate the purpose of hijab. If she is with other women or she's with maharam she can wear such things. ونحن جميعا يا إخواني يجب أن نجمل وجوهنا وأعمالنا. عند الله سبحانه وتعالى. And all of us, oh my brothers, it's upon us all that we beautify our faces and our actions for Allah جل في العلا. هذا أهم بكثير من أن نجمل وجوهنا عند الناس. This is much more important than that we beautify our faces for the people. خصوصا إذا كان تجميل الوجوه فيه معصية لله سبحانه وتعالى. Especially if in beautifying the faces includes in it. A disobedience to Allah. When Nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says. Man iltama sarid Allah bi sakhat al-nas radiyallahu anhu wa arda alayhi al-nas. 
Whoever seeks out the pleasure of Allah in spite of the displeasure of the people, Allah is pleased with him and he makes the people pleased with him. ومن طلب رضا الناس بسخط الله يعني يفعل معصية من أجل أن يرضي الناس سخط الله عليه وأسخط عليه الناس And whoever seeks out the pleasure of the people by way of something that is displeasing to Allah Allah is displeased with him and he makes the people displeased with him فأختي السائلة الله يحفظها ويبارك فيها عليها أن تمتثل بذلك أن تحرص على أن تتجمل بأخلاقها وأفعالها وعفتها عند الله عز وجل لا أن تتجمل بالميكاب والمكياج عند الناس. نعم. So the Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said so my my noble sister may Allah preserve her and bless her upon her is to exemplify this and to give importance to this that she beautify herself for Allah and not that she beautify herself with for the people with makes up with make ups and things like this. واستأذن الشيخ عبد الحكيم والشيخ زاهد في أن أعود إلى نقطة تقدم ذكرها. And I want to seek the brother Abdul Hakim and Sheikh Zahid's permission in uh, a point that I left off or that we want to return back to from before. And it is the issue of beautifying and uh, adorning the homes for the entering of the month of Ramadan. And we've clarified that this has no foundation in the legislation. But there are some things that are good and beneficial that make us not in need of these type of actions. مثل أن نجمع الأسرة والبيت والأولاد على الإفطار مع بعض ونغرس فيهم هذه المعاني الإيمانية. No, I'm like gathering the family and the children in the home at the time of iftar for iftar. And instilling in them these beneficial meanings or these great meanings. ونعلم أبناءنا أننا نصوم ونترك الطعام والشراب من أجل طاعة الله سبحانه وتعالى. And that we teach our children that we fast and that we leave off our food and our drink for the sake of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. ونذكرهم بأن الجوع الذي شعرنا به في نهار رمضان. يذكرنا بإخوالنا يعانون من الجوع في طول العام بسبب الفقر والمجاعات والمشاكل. And we remind them that the hunger that we experience in the daytime of Ramadan, it is something that reminds us about the hunger that is experienced by others in the entirety of the year because of their poverty and their hard circumstances that they suffer from. ونخبرهم كيف أن الأسرة لابد أن تتراحم وأن يحترم بعضهم بعضا ويقدر بعضهم بعضا وأن يكون تكون الابتسامة هي السائدة بينهم والكلام الحسن والجيد. And we in teach them about the fact that the family it's necessary that they have mercy upon one another and that they uh, uh, honor one another and that we teach them that they are pleasant with one another that they have good faces and pleasant faces towards one another and they have good character with each other. These type of actions make us not in need of those other actions mentioned. And Allah knows best. أحسن الله إليكم وبارك الله فيكم حفظكم الله عندنا عدة الأسئلة ما يتعلق بسفر المرأة لحالها أو لوحدي بدون محرم منها هل يجوز لها أن تسافر من الولاية إلى ولاية للعمل وأيضا إذا لم يكن لديها محرم لا يعني غير متوفر أو مسافر أصلا المحرم فهل يجوز لها السفر لأجل العمل هي اللي يعني, يعني تنتقل من ولاية إلى ولاية أو تسافر مثلا وترجع أسبوع, نعم أسبوع وترجع نعم, نعم يعني في نعم عدة الأسئلة من يتعلق في هذا الموضوع نعم وأيضا بالنسبة للذهاب المرأة لوحدها للعمرة مع الأخوات وأيضا السفر مع الأخوات الآخرة ولكن مع من الولاية إلى ولاية. نعم. We have multiple questions in relation to sisters traveling alone from state to state either in group of the sisters or by, by herself for many reasons for among, from among the reasons is that Mehram is not available, or he's, he himself is, has traveled out of country, or because she has no Mehram at all, uh, who can be with her 
and she has to go uh, travel for the business or for job. So different questions around this topic. Now, ورد عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه نهى عن سفر المرأة من غير محرم. It's been the Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى. He said it's been related from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that it is impermissible for a woman to travel without a محرم. وهل هذا النهي له استثناءات يعني له أحوال يجوز المرأة أن تسافر فيها أم لا؟ And does this prohibition have exceptions? I, does it have circumstances that make it okay for a woman to travel without a mahram for her? The scholars, they mention that yes, there are exceptions for this. لا تخشى إلا الله والذئب على غنمها. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said to the companions إن تطول بكم الحياة if life is long for you all if you all have a long life telling them about events that will come in the future and he mentioned that you'll find a woman traveling from Hira which is a place in Yemen and making tawaf around the bait which is in Mecca and she has no fear other than Allah and then after that the wolf. وهذا الخبر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يخبر به على سبيل المدح والثناء أن هذا إن شاء الله سيكون. Now, and this information the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is informing about it in a way of مدح or in a way of praise, talking about things that are good that will come. وقد بيّن ابن تيمية رحمه الله أن هذه المرأة خرجت من غير أن يكون معها رجل لأن لو كان معها رجل لا تخشى. الذئب على غنمها. and ابن uh, and ابن uh, شيخ الإسلام رحمه الله تعالى he clarified was it ابن تيمية أو ابن تيمية أي نحسن الله شيخ ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى he clarified that this woman was traveling without a mahram because if she had a man with her she wouldn't have been scared of the wolf but instead she was traveling and not fearing anything other than Allah and the wolf. ولأنه لو كان معها رجل لما كان الأمر غريبا. ما في غرابة. And likewise, if she was traveling with a man, there wouldn't have been any strangeness to this information. There wouldn't have been anything out of the ordinary about it. ولذلك أفتى ابن تيمية وغيره كثير من علماء بأن المرأة إذا كان سفرها مأمونا فيه أمن وكان لحاجة جاز لها أن تسافر. And for this reason, we find that Ibn Taymiyyah and other than him from the scholars, they give the fatwa that a woman, if her journey is safe, if, it was, if the journey was safe and for a need, for a haja, then it is permissible for her to travel without a mahram. ومن العلماء المعاصرين من أفتى بهذا منهم مثلا الشيخ عبد الرزاق عفيفي رحمه الله. And from the scholars, the contemporary scholars who have given the fatwa in this, in this way is the Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Afifi, al rahimahullah ta'ala. وَلَا بُدَّ أَن نَتَذَكَّرْ الْأَشْشَرْطَيْنِ أَوَّلًا أَنْ يَكُونَ سَفَرًا مَأْمُونًا تَأْمَنْ فِيهِ عَلَى نَفْسِهَا الْفِتْنَةِ And it's necessary that we make present in our thoughts these two conditions. The first of them is that her travel be safe, that she have safety and security. There's no fitna for her journey. وأن يكون سفر طاعة أو لحاجة. And that it be secondly a سفر that they call سفر الطاعة, a travel in a permissible goal, or that it be a travel for something that is a حاجة or a need. أما المرأة سفر الطاعة. Obedience. Yeah, سبحان الله عليكم. That it be a سفر for طاعة, a سفر in obedience. سفر طاعة يعني لا يكون معصية. لا يكون سفر لفعل محرم. And that's what it was. I translated the meaning. Jazakallah khair. That it's a سفر الطاعة is a travel that there's no disobedience in it. It's a for a permissible purpose. أما المرأة التي ليس لها محرم. As far as the woman who travels, as far as the woman who doesn't have a محرم. لا أبا ولا أخا ولا ابنا ولا خالا ولا عما ولا زوجا. She doesn't have any family member, and the Sheikh mentions them off. Those who are the محرم, the father. The brother, the son, the husband. فهذه هي يجوز لها أن تسافر للحاجة إذا كانت مع رفقة مأمونة. Then this woman, it's permissible for her to travel for need in the accompanying of other women who are safe for her, مأمونة, that are trustworthy and safe in this company. 
والإسلام يا إخواني ينظر إلى المقاصد وإلى الحكم وإلى الآثار بشكل دقيق. In Islam, oh my brothers, it considers the maqasid or the intents of something and to the wisdoms behind something and to the effects of something in a very specific way. وقد بين بعض العلماء منهم الشيخ عبد المحسن عبيكان حفظه الله And some of the scholars have clarified from the Mishnah of the Muhsin al-Ubaykan, Hafidhullah, أن المرأة اليوم لو سافرت بالطائرة مع مجاميع الناس مع وجود الأمن ورجال الأمن أفضل من أن تسافر مع زوجها لوحدها بالسيارة وتقطع مسافة ألف كيلو متر. That, for example, if a woman today was to travel with the people on an airplane, for example, and the airplane with people who are safe and who are trustworthy. That this type of travel is safer than if she was to travel with her and her mahram alone. باعتبار أن سفرها مع زوجها مثلا في مثل هذه الحال أن تقطع مسافة ألف كيلو متر في الليل في السيارة لوحدهم وقطع طرق سفرها في الطائرة أأمن من هذا السفر. And he mentioned the distance of a thousand uh, uh, kilo, kilometers. He says, and this is because that if a woman and her husband were to travel this distance alone. At night, for example, a thousand kilometers alone by themselves at night, this other travel on the airplane with her by herself would have been safer for her. And this at the same time does not mean that we are lax about a woman traveling by herself without a mahram. And instead that this is the circumstance of exception. التي لا تجد محرما لها. The one who doesn't have a mahram for herself. أو أنها تسافر لحاجة ماسة ولا تم تتمكن من أخذ محرمها. Or she is traveling for a severe need and she was unable to take advantage or to get the mahram for this. في مثل هذه الأحوال يجوز كما تقدم بشروطه. In these circumstances, it is permissible according to what we have previously mentioned from its conditions. والعلماء قد ذكروا. في مؤلفاتهم أن المرأة لو أسلمت في بلد غير مسلم لوحدها ولم تجد من تهاجر معه من محارمها جاز لها أن تهاجر لوحدها مع الرفقة المأمونة. No. And the Sheikh Hafiz Allah Taala he said and the scholars they mentioned that if a woman accepts Islam by herself in an area, then it is permissible for her to make hijra from that area with a group of trustworthy and safe uh, companions. Uh, if she doesn't have a mahram or somebody to go with her. And here I want to give you all one of the secret and subtle benefits from the secret and subtle benefits of the sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إذا حرم أمرا يحرم كل الطرق التي تؤدي إلى هذا الأمر. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he makes something impermissible then he makes impermissible as well all of the pathways that lead to that impermissible action. For an example of this, take zina or fornication. When Allah جل, he made this action impermissible, he made impermissible as well all of the things that cause a person to fall into zina. فحرم الله تبرج المرأة. So he made impermissible the uncovering or the the showing off of her body, the woman, the woman showing off of her body. وتعطر المرأة. And the woman putting on perfume. وخضوع المرأة بالقول. And the woman like lowering and softening her voice when she speaks. ومصافحة المرأة. And shaking the hand of the مصافحة. نعم. Now and shaking the hand of the woman. وكذلك النظر إلى النساء حرام. And looking at the women in impermissible. والخلوة بين الرجل والمرأة. And the man and the woman being alone together. وكشف العورات حرام. And exposing the عورات or the private areas is حرام. كل ما يؤدي إلى الوقوع في الزنا فهو منهي عنه. Everything that leads a person to falling into zina then it is also impermissible. ولذلك قال تعالى فلا تقرب الزنا. And for that reason Allah تعالى he says فلا تقرب الزنا and don't approach or come close to zina. هنا ما قال لا تزنوا قال ولا تقربوا الزنا كل ما يقرب إلى الزنا فأنت من منهي عنه. So here he did not just simply say don't commit zina, but instead he said don't come closer, don't approach to zina. So anything that causes an individual 
to fall into zina, then it is likewise impermissible. And this is from the great good quality or the good qualities and the good attributes of this legislation. That if it makes something impermissible due to its harm and the evil that is a result of it, it cuts off every pathway that leads to falling into this thing. And for that reason, my brothers, the scholars, they mentioned that the things that are impermissible, al-muharramat, are two categories. Something that is haram for its own sake, and it's haram for its own self, or it's what it is. والثاني محرم لغيره يعني أنه محرم لأنه يؤدي إلى المحرم. And the second of them is something that is haram for the sake of something else, i.e., it is something that leads to something else that is haram. وبالمثال السابق الزنا محرم لذاته. So according to the previous example, a zina is impermissible for its own sake. وكل ما يؤدي إلى الزنا هو محرم لذاته يعني محرم لأنه يؤدي إلى الزنا. And everything that leads one to falling into zina, then this is impermissible for the sake of something else. I it leads to fall. It is impermissible because it leads to falling into zina, which is impermissible for its own sake. ولهذا من فوائد هذا التفريق أن نعرف المحرم لذاته والمحرم لغيره. No. And so for, based on all of this, when we understand the difference between this separation and those things that are impermissible for their own sake and things that are permissible for the sake of something else, is that we understand that the things that are impermissible for their own sake, nothing makes them permissible except extreme necessity. Only that. For example, drinking alcohol. لو أن جماعة من المجرمين قالوا للإنسان إما أن تشرب الخمر أو نقتلك جاز له في هذه الحالة أن يشرب الخمر. If a group of criminals say to the Muslim individual, either drink this alcohol or we're going to kill you, it is permissible for him to drink this alcohol. لأنه مضطر لذلك. Because he has an extreme necessity to do so. ولو كان الإنسان في مطعم يأكل. And if an individual was in a restaurant eating. ثم غص في لغمة. and then he started choking on a piece of meat. وشارف على الموت. and he was on الموت. and he was on the brink of death. ولم يجد سائلا ي يسلك فيه هذه اللقمة إلا خمرا. and he couldn't find any liquid to wash this or flush this piece out except alcohol. جاز له في هذه الحالة أن يشرب من هذا الخمر. It is permissible for him in this circumstance to drink this alcohol. لأنه مضطر إليه. Because he has this ضرورة, this extreme need for it. ومثل لو أنه كان في الصحراء تائها وأوشك أن يموت من الجوع. And likewise, if he was in the desert, lost, and he's worried or he's on the verge of death. وما وجد إلا ميتة. And he didn't find anything other than carrion or ميتة, some animal that was not slaughtered. جاز له في هذه الحالة أن يأكل من هذه الميتة المحرمة لأنه مضطر لذلك. It is permissible for him to eat from this Karen because he is one who is مضطر. He is in extreme need of it. كما قال تعالى إلا ما اضطررتم إليه. Like Allah تعالى He says except that which you are in extreme need of. فالمحرم لذاته لا تبيحه إلا الضرورة فقط. So that which is محرم لذاته or حرام for its own sake or impermissible for its own sake, it is not made lawful except by way of something that is ضرورة or an extreme necessity. أما المحرم لغيره. As far as things that are حرام for the sake of something else. فتبيحه الحاجة. Then it is made permissible by needs. ونحن أحيانا نأخذ فصلا كاملا كورس كامل يعني في الجامعة من أجل معرفة الفرق بين الضرورة والحاجة. And we we might take in the university a whole course just to understand the difference between what is a ضرورة which we translated as an extreme necessity and a حاجة that which is a need. لكن أضرب لكم بعض الأمثلة. But I'll just set for you some examples. ذكرنا أن كشف عورة المرأة لا يجوز عند الرجال. We mentioned that the woman exposing her aura 
is not permissible <laughs> amongst the, around the men. Because this leads to falling into indecency. But for example, if a woman in the later part of the night, her hand caught on fire, she was burnt on her hand, or her arm. Or her arm was wounded. And they went with her to the doctor into the hospital. And they said to her that we only have male doctors at this moment. And there's no one who can uh, treat this wound except a male doctor. In this circumstance, it's permissible for her to uncover or unveil her arm so that this male doctor can work on her, perform on her. In spite of the fact that this is not something that is an extreme necessity because she will not die from this wound in her arm. But instead, but instead, this is a need because she is in need for treatment. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. And so we'll return this back to the original point. And that is, is that a woman traveling without a mahram is impermissible for the sake of something else. And so therefore, it is made lawful with the existence of need. Allahu And Allah knows best. Jazakum Allahu khairan wa baraka Allahu feekum ala hadha tafseel ar-ra'i' A beautiful explanation insha'Allah ta'ala. Baraka Allahu feekum. The next question, um, the sister asked, what are the best acts of ibadah for sisters in Ramadan um, if she is on, on her period? Uh, after the ta'at Ramadan, the the Ramadan, the woman, generally speaking, in a, in a general sense, from the best actions of worship that she can do in Ramadan is that she established the obligations that are upon her in her home. From taking care of her father and her children and her husband and presenting food for them meaning that these actions might be better for her than her reciting Quran. And likewise that she put great effort if her monthly visitors come to her into making dhikr, into making istighfar, or asking Allah to forgive her. And that she recite the Quran from her memory. If she is one who has memorized Quran, that she recites Fatiha and Ikhlas and things like that, and she can repeat them. And inshallah, oh, and with Allah's permission, she actually obtains reward for her abandoning of fasting in this circumstance. And I want to mention for you, likewise, an important benefit. The obedience of Allah. The, the worship that is Islam. It is divided into two categories. Actions or acts of worship that are actions that an individual does. For example, salah. And fasting. And hajj. And reciting Quran. And this, and the second of them is what is known as worship that is abandonment or 
acts of worship that, re that require that you abandon something, that an individual leave off something for Allah. ومثل أن يترك الزنا. For example, that an individual abandon fornication. ويترك الغيبة. And he leaves off backbiting. ويترك عقوق الوالدين. And he leaves off being disobedient to his parents. ويترك شرب الخمر. And he leaves off the drinking of alcohol. هذه عبادة تركية فيها ترك. All of these are acts of worship that you are abandoning something. ولذلك سأذكر لكم فائدة باختصار الذي يحفظها. بإذن الله تعالى له جائزة عند الشيخ زاهد. He said, and so for that reason, I'm going to mention for you a great benefit. The one who memorizes it, then he will find his he will find a prize with الشيخ زاهد بإذن الله. يعني إحنا فلسنا الشيخ زاهد. So we want to take the permission of الشيخ زاهد from this. بس هذه جوازه. He said, these are your only prizes here. العبادة يا إخوان. الله يحفظ. الآن إذا عرفنا أن العبادة فعل وترك. He says so now that if we know that worship is doing things and leaving things off. إذا نقول العبادة هي فعل المأمور وترك المحظور. Then we will say that worship is doing what you've been commanded and abandoning what you've been warned about. فعل المأمور يعني ما أمرنا الله به. Doing what you've been commanded, i.e. doing that which Allah has commanded you to do. And leaving that which is mahdhur, I said mahdhur the first time. Leaving that which is prohibited is leaving that which Allah is forbidding you from. And from that, is that a woman who was fast, I mean who was on her menses, when she leaves the salat, وتترك الصيام. and abandons the fasting. هي في عبادة. she is actually worshiping. لأن الله أمرها أن تترك الصلاة والصيام في حال دورها الشهرية. because Allah Azza wa Jalla has commanded her to leave off fasting and I mean leave off salat and fasting when she has this monthly cycle. ولذلك لو صلت وهي حائض أثمت على هذا الفعل. and for this reason, if she was to make salat while she was on her menses. She would be sinning because of this action. Wallahu ta'ala. And Allah knows best. So he said, he asked, where's the question at in this for the, for the Jaiza, basically? He said, no, it's not a question. It's the fact that you memorize this principle, that action, that ibadah is doing what you've been commanded and abandoning what you've been forbidden. Jazakum Allah khair. Sister asked on, about ruling on watching movies. Sa'ila tas'al an hukmu mishahadat al-aflam. Naam. Afriduna barakallahu fikum. Mishahadat al-aflam. Iza kana fiha umurun muharrama. Watching movies. The Shaykh Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he said, watching movies, if they have in them impermissible things, mithil, النساء المتبرجات. like exposed women أو مشاهد الرقص or like witnessing dancing أو المشاهد المخلة المخلة or, or, those, or, or those observations that are reductive like they're, they're missing the goodness أو المعازف وغيرها or music and other than that فهذه لا شك يا إخواني أنها حرام then these, oh my brothers, there's no doubt that these things are impermissible. And the reality today is that there's no film except that it is, exists in it, these things. And I want to add to that that these movies or films are directed وقلوب من يشاهدها أمورا وسلوكيات معينة. Or should I say they're purposefully directed? They plant in the minds of those who witness them and observe them certain mannerisms and characteristics. وتزين للناس السلوكيات الإجرامية المحرمة. And they beautify for the people these سلوكيات, these etiquettes and qualities that are impermissible. وأنتم تعرفون أن كثيرا ممن ارتكب جرائم القتل للوحشية للأبرياء. And you all know that a lot of these people who commit these atrocities and killing 
uh, innocent people اكتشفوا أنه من مدمني مشاهدة أفلام الحرب والجرائم والأكشن. It was discovered that they are from those who are mudmen who are constantly watching these vil- these films and videos of war and killing of people. والفتاة التي ستشاهد فيلم فيه قصة غرام وهمية ومكذوبة بين فتاة وشاب. And the young woman who watches a video that has this a uh, story in it of love between a young woman and a young man there's no doubt that she'll be affected by this and likewise the young men and likewise the father who watches a film that has in it an actor who portrays the role of a harsh and severe father there's no doubt that this will affect him or, or have an effect in him and for that reason oh my brothers it is upon us that we avoid these affairs دراسات كثيرة تؤكد أن الإنسان ربما يشاهد فيلما واحدا ويغير لديه بعض القناعات أو يهون منها يعني ممكن يكون هو لا يحب الدماء ولا يحب القتل لكن بسبب متابعة فيلم يصبح القتل عنده هين والدماء عنده هينة والعياذ بالله He says numerous studies have shown that an individual maybe watches one film and it changes some of his thought or it removes him from thoughts that he used to have for example, you might find an individual who used to be against the shedding of blood and, and violence and through watching a film it becomes something that he is less repulsed by or something that is much easier upon him. And maybe a person can take in its place or take as a replacement for this those uh, documentaries, those current documentaries that, uh, that are produced. Like, or, like those films that talk about the oceans and the seas and the amazing creation of Allah and the creation of the seas and the ocean. Or the, the things that talk about space and that which Allah has created therein. Or that which talks about the animals and their qualities and the amazing things that Allah Azawajal created about them or in them. بالإضافة إلى البرامج الحوارية الهادفة التي تكون مع بعض العلماء أو غيرهم من علماء الإسلام. In addition to some of those uh, programs that are conversation or those interviews that might be conducted with some of the scholars and the people who educate about Islam. في كل ذلك ما يغني عن تلك الأفلام القبيحة. And all of the, in all of that is that which suffices us from the likes of these filthy films. والله أعلم. And Allah knows best. Jazakum Allah khairan. Barak Allah fikum. Next question. And before we go on with the next question, insha- I mean, alhamdulillah, we took more than an hour already uh, with the question of the sisters, insha'Allah. Ta'ala. So maybe I will take one or two more and then I will open the floor for our brothers, insha'Allah. Ta'ala. We don't want to forget our brothers. But alhamdulillah, uh, we have great respect for our sisters. So we started with our sisters. We wanted to make sure we take care of our sisters before we take care of anybody else. Brother Tahir, mashallah, and Imam uh, uh, Shamir, mashallah, they said we have to make sure that we take care of our sisters. So, alhamdulillah, my sisters, mashallah, you are being taken care of, alhamdulillah. And now, inshallah, after one or two, we will come to you, inshallah. So, uh, what is your advice to wake up early for Fajr? أولا الاجتهاد بالدعاء. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said responding to the question first of all that a person give great effort in dua. أن يدعو الله بأن يعينه على القيام وعلى أداء صلاة الفجر. He makes dua that Allah Azza wa Jal assist him upon waking up and performing or observing صلاة الفجر. نحن يا إخواني كلنا ضعفاء. All of us, oh my brothers, all of us are weak. وكلنا قد تغلبنا نفوسنا أحيانا. And all of us, our own selves might overpower us every once in a while. فتتكاسل عن العبادة. And thus we become lazy in the performance of worship. 
أو تقودنا إلى فعل المعصية. Or it leads us to uh, performing something that is disobedience to Allah. كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم كل بني آدم خطاء. As the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said every child of Adam makes mistakes over and over. وخير الخطائين التوابون. And the best of those who make mistakes over and over are those who repent over and over. نحن ضعفاء. All of us are weak. وَلَوْلَا أَنْ أَعَانَنَ اللَّهُ عَلَى طَاعَتِهِ لَمَا قُمْنَا بِذَلِكَ And if it wasn't for the fact that Allah Azza wa Jalla assist us in His obedience, we wouldn't have been able to do it. وَلِذَلِكَ نَقُولُ دَائِمًا فِي سُورَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ فِي صَلَوَاتِنَا إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِيدُ And for that reason, we say over and over in Salat al-Fatiha, I mean in, in, in Surah al-Fatiha, in our Salat, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِيدُ and you are low and yours alone aid we seek. We worship you alone without any partners and we seek your assistance in that worship. And for that reason, the Prophet he said to Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Ya Mu'ad, inni la'uhibbuk. O Mu'ad, indeed I love you. فَلَا تَدَعَنَّ دُبُرَ كُلِّ صَلَاةٍ So never abandon, never ever abandon at the end of every salah من أن تقول from saying اللهم أعني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أعني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم نحفظ هذا الدعاء Oh Allah, the translation of it which is Oh Allah, assist me in your remembrance and then appreciation of you and in good worship of you. We need to memorize this dua. And we make dua to Allah that he assist us in Salat al-Fajr. And from it as well, going back to the beginning of the question, is that we take use of the means. أضع المنبه سواء في الهاتف النقال أو في ساعة ثابتة أو أي منبه كان ليوقظني على صلاة الفجر. Activating the alarm in one's watch or on one's phone or in any other place where there is an alarm at. ومنها النوم على طهارة. And likewise from it is to sleep upon purity or in purification. وأن ينام الإنسان على جنبه الأيمن. And that a person sleep on his right side. مرة كنت في أستمع يعني لمحاضرة لأحد الأطباء الكبار. Once I was listening to a lecture by one of the high doctors or one of the uh, you know experienced doctors. وهو يشرح الفرق بين أن تنام على جنبك الأيمن وبين أن تنام على جنبك الأيسر. And he was explaining the difference between sleeping on your right side and sleeping on your left side. وذكر لنا أن النوم على الجنب الأيسر إذا كان الإنسان قد أكل يعني في معدته طعام يقول هذا خطير جدا. And he said that from the effects of sleeping on one's left side, if a person had eaten, I, if in his intestines or in his stomach is food, this is extremely dangerous. وذكر أن الأمعاء التي يذهب إليها الطعام تكون في جانب المعدة الأيمن. And that the 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 intestines or the the place where the food travels from one's intestines is that it goes onto the right side of them. فإذا نمت على جنبك الأيسر سيكون في ذلك خطورة أن الطعام يبقى ولا يذهب. So if you sleep on your left side, it has the effect that the food will remain and it won't go anywhere. وقد يكون كثير منا جرب هذا. And maybe a lot of us have experienced this. أنه ينام بعد طعام. Is that he sleep after eating? وإذا قام يجد كأن الطعام لا زال يعني واقفا. And he he would notice that after he wakes up, it's as if the food is still remaining inside of him. كان هذا الطبيب يشرح ذلك وهو لا يعلم أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حث على النوم على الجنب الأيمن. This doctor was explaining all of this in spite of the fact that he didn't know that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم encourage us to sleep on our right side. فلما أخبرته بذلك تعجب. So when I informed him about this, he was amazed. هذه كلها إن شاء الله من الأسباب التي تعين الإنسان على القيام لصلاة الفجر. All of these things, إن شاء الله, are from the means that assist a person in waking up for صلاة الفجر. ومن اجتهد وصدق مع الله سيعينه الله سبحانه وتعالى. And whoever puts forth the effort and is sincere and honest with Allah, Allah will assist him. And Allah knows best.
جزاكم الله خيرا وبارك الله فيكم. Okay, my brother. So come to you or take one more. You guys have questions? Are you guys ready? Ah, تفضل. السائل إذا كان عند الرجل يعني عدد من الجن في يعني سب عدد من الجن نعم. مصاب الجن يعني أعداد يعني سبعة جن مثلا كيف يخرجها بدون أن يسترقي بدون أن يسترقي نعم. وكذلك إذا يريد أن يعمل حجامة فأين يعمل حجامة يعني لإخراج هذا الشيء نعم أولا يا إخواني الجن كيدهم ضعيف the Sheikh Habibullah, uh, the, did everybody hear the question first of all? That's an important thing. Was the question heard? Uh, no, I think you said it. Okay. Yeah. The person asked the question, and I forgot the third part of it, but the question asked, uh, the person asked the question, if a person has several jinn in him, then how does he expel them without requesting ruqya? How does he expel them without requesting ruqya? And likewise, if he wants to do hijama, for this as a remedy, then how, where should he do the hijab? Does it lead to a specific way or is it both in the way? I know. He will leave in the hijab. Okay. الجن كيدهم ضعيف. The Sheikh Hafidhu Allah Ta'ala, he started off by saying, first of all, the jinn their plot or their yeah their plot is weak كما قال تعالى إن كيد الشيطان كان ضعيفا as Allah تعالى he said indeed the كيد of شيطان it was something that was weak ولا يتسلطون إلا على الإنسان الضعيف and indeed they are only given authority or control over an individual who is weak ويكون الإنسان ضعيفا إذا ابتعد عن ذكر الله and the individual becomes weak if he stays far away from the remembrance of Allah and if he is deficient in the obedience of Allah and he abandons or is negligent regarding the adhkar in this circumstance it is possible that he can be affected by the ayn and likewise it's possible here that the jinn can have authority over him and the only remedy for this is that a person seek refuge with Allah or return to Allah. He is the one who allowed them to have control over you. And he is the only one who can suffice you of them and keep you safe and protect you from them. And Allah Ta'ala or Allah Ta'ala has informed us about the method of remedying one who is afflicted by the jinn. ويتلخص ذلك في عدة أمور. And that is summarized in a certain amount of affairs. أولها الدعاء. The first of them is دعاء. أن يلجأ إلى الله. That a person resort to Allah. ويتضرع إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى. And he completely humble himself to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. وثانيها الحرص على الطاعة والصلاة. And the second of them is that a person have diligence and obedience towards Allah سبحانه وتعالى and صلاة. والثالثة الأذكار. And the third of them is the remembrances or the adhkar. Adhkar al-siqad min al-noum. The adhkar for waking up from sleeping. And wearing clothes. And eating and drinking. And the adhkar for going to bed. And the adhkar for leaving the home and entering into it. And the adhkar for going into the khala, uh, the the place of using the 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 toilet and the dorat al miyah, the places of washing up. ومن الذكر والأذكار أن يجتهد في تلاوة القرآن. And from the ذكر and the أذكار that a person should put effort into is the recitation of Quran. والأمر الرابع هو الرقية. And the fourth affair is الرقية. 
والرقية تنقسم إلى قسمين. In this ruqya, it is divided into two categories. القسم الأول أن يرقي الإنسان نفسه. The first of them is that an individual perform ruqya upon his own self. وهذا أفضل. And this is preferable. يرقي نفسه بسورة الفاتحة. He performs ruqya upon his own self by reciting Surah Al-Fatiha and Ayat Al-Kursi. وخواتيم البقرة آمن الرسول. Now, I mean, the, the ending ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah that start with Amin al-Rasul. And Surah Al-Kafirun. And Surah Al-Ikhlas. And, and the Mu'awwidhat. He repeats these things. And if he were to repeat them seven times, this would be preferable. And if he were to repeat them seven times, this would be preferable. Meaning, in every instance, he would read each of them seven times. So he would recite seven times Surah Al Fatiha and seven times the ending of Surah Al Baqarah, and like this. He does this every day. Seven times, seven. He does this every day, seven times. With Allah's permission, he will see the difference. And from the greatest means or the methods in him performing ruqya upon his own self, is that he recites Surah Al-Baqarah. That he should read it once every three days. بإذن الله تعالى إن فعل ذلك لن يمر عليه شهران إلا وقد تعافى. With Allah's permission, if he was to do this, then two months wouldn't pass until he found that Allah cured him. وأن يرقي الإنسان نفسه هذا أفضل. And that a person perform ruqya upon his own self, this is preferable. والقسم الثاني من أقسام الرقية. And the second category from the categories of ruqya. أن يستعين بغيره ليرقيه. Is that he take the assistance of other than him in performing ruqya upon him. وهذه لا بأس بها إذا كانت للحاجة. And there is no harm in this if it was done out of need. وإن كان الأفضل أن يرقي نفسه. Even if it was more preferable that he perform ruqya upon himself. نعم والحجامة قد ورد أنها من أسباب الشفاء. And as far as hijama, then it has been transmitted that it is from the means of cure and a remedy. وسؤال الأخ هل لا بد من شخص معين أم لا؟ And as far as the question of the brother, which he added towards the end of it that I forgot originally. الجواب نعم لا بد أن يكون الحجام حاذقا يفهم الحجامة ويعملها بإتقان. Does it have to be with a certain person then, or 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 or, or in this nature? Then the Sheikh Habibullah he responded, yes, it has to be with a person who is experienced and skilled in the method of hijama. وكذلك أن يكون أمينا. And likewise, one that is trustworthy. ونحن ننتهز هذه الفرصة. And we want to take advantage of this opportunity to ask Allah, the one who is high in his loftiness, to cure every sick individual and to give a, a, a cure to everyone who is afflicted and to falsify and make invalid the magic of the magicians and to re reject or push back the plot of the jinn against the human back in their own throats or their own necks. Indeed, he, subhanahu, is one who hears all things and answers the request. And Allah knows best. Ahsanallahu <clears throat> alaykum. Uh, here's a long question, so uh, bear with me. Uh, it says, what is your advice? for families that are here in America that don't have close family members with the rules of masjid, saying that no kids are allowed in the masjid because of the noise they make, especially in Ramadan. We are not able to leave them home or with family members to keep watch of them. We want to be in the masjid as a family and they put the rules for women that don't pray to not to come to the masjid, which, which ha, those who have, who have kids and that are able to pray, but they cannot come because, because she is not allowed. Additionally, we get kicked out of the masjid because of these rules. So I don't know how to translate this. Yeah. 
هي كانها تقول انها لوحدها في البيت ومع الاولاد وتقول في يعني في المسجد عندهم قوانين يقولون لا تاتي بالاطفال في المسجد اذا كان عندهم يعني يسوون الازعاج ازعاج نعم فتقول ولكن ليس لدي اقارب لا استطيع ان اتركهم في البيت وانا يعني اريد ان اتي الى المسجد واصلي اصلي مع الناس في المسجد ف يعني هذا اللب والكلام يعني تقريرا ملخ... تلخيص يعني نعم ديد اي ميس انيثينغ اخي انت قرات السؤال خلاص شيخ ايوه نعم بالانجليزي نعم نحن نطرح الاجابه اي نعم ترجمها شيخ تقول بال... انها تريدت نعم. من المسجد بيكوز اوف ذيس رولز لاجل هذه القوانين التي ودعوها نعم اولا ان شاء الله اسمع ذيس مسجد ان شاء الله ان شاء الله الأخت التي يكون لها أولاد وأطفال صغار وهكذا الأب يستحسن أن لا يحضرهم للمسجد إذا كانوا يسببون إزعاجا. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he says that the woman who has young children and likewise the father it is مستحسن يستحسن it is good it is deemed good to not bring them to the masjid if they cause disruption. ولذلك الفقهاء نصوا على أن الطفل الغير مميز الذي لا يميز الأشياء لا يعرف أن هذا مسجد يظنه مكان للعب أنه يمنع من إحضاره للمسجد. And for that reason, the fuqaha they mentioned that the طفل غير مميز, the the child who has not reached the age of discernment, the one who is not able to distinguish between things, so he doesn't recognize that this is a masjid and not a place of play. It is not good to, or they should be prohibited from coming to the masjid. And the legislation prohibits us from everything that causes harm in the masjid. Or causes harm to those praying in the masjid. From that is the eating of uh, garlic and onion. ومثله الاتيان المسجد بروائح كريهة. And from this is coming to the masjid with uh, offensive smells. In spite of the fact that garlic and onion are permissible foods. Uh, except that the Prophet وسلم, he said, Whoever has eaten garlic or onion, then let him not approach our place of prayer. فإن الملائكة تتأذى مما يتأذى منه بنو آدم. For indeed the angels are offended or bothered by that which the child of Adam is bothered with. والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. And the and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. نهى الصحابة أن يرفعوا أصواتهم بتلاوة القرآن في المسجد. He forbade the Sahaba from raising their voices. In the uh, with the Quran and uh, uh, reciting the Quran in the masjid. Because it causes a disturbance for the others, for the others who are reciting and making salat. So if the Prophet وسلم, forbade raising the voice while reciting the Quran. Then how about children who cause disruption in other than them? And we want to direct a, a, a greeting or a, a welcoming to this sister, this noble sister. And we want to appreciate from her her diligence in coming and participating in the masjid. But we want to say to her at the same time, إن تركك للصلاة في المسجد. You're abandoning or you're leaving off of making salat in the masjid. حماية للناس من إزعاج الأطفال. Preserving or protecting the people from the disruption of the children. أنت مأجورة فيه. You are getting rewarded for this. يعني إذا بقيت في بيتك عند أولادك فأنت في عبادة. Meaning that if you were to stay home with your children, then you are Worshipping, you are in an act of worship. And the Sheikh Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he swore by Allah that you're staying home 
and remaining with your children and taking care of them is better for you with Allah than coming to the masjid. Because you taking care of your children and protecting them and raising them is something that is an obligation upon the mother. And as far as Salat al-Taraweeh and standing in prayer, then this is a sunnah. فلا يترك الواجب من أجل فعل سنة. So you should not leave off the obligation in order to accomplish the sunnah. هذا من قلة فقه الشريعة. This is from the lack of understanding of the legislation. نسأل الله أن يجزيها خير الجزاء. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to reward her greatly. ونتمنى منها أن تدرك أن الأخوة القائمون القائمين على المساجد إنما وضعوا هذه القوانين. And we hope for her that she comes to realize that the brothers who are responsible for this mesh or for that masjid, they have made these rules and regulations as a way of preserving the good for the entirety. May, may Allah reward them with a good reward. Barakallah fikum. And once again, um, the only reason I read this question because it came directly from the president of the masjid. Jazakallah uh, khairan. Uh, but I want to I want to take this opportunity to once again mention this, my dear brothers and sisters, the administration of this masjid, your masjid, Al Masjid Al Mubarak. Wallahi, they work very very hard, and the Imam of the masjid, Jazakallah Khairan, they work very very hard to help you get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The goal of this masjid is to establish ibadat in a way that you can you can do your ibadah with tumanina. And with khushu'a, you can focus on your ibadah. And the rules and regulations and the, uh, they, they may have put in, you may not like some of these, but for a greater masliha, it is in your own good. And it is for your own benefit. So we want to make sure, my brothers and sisters, to understand that these rules and regulations, they are for your benefit. And it is going to, inshallah, help you. Ma Alhamdulillah, Sheikh, Mashallah, Alhamdulillah, beautifully explained. To be honest, there is no other explanation after the explanation of the Sheikh. Alhamdulillah, khairan. But I guess the Imam also want to add something. Naam, Fadl Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, we just wanted to shake advice to the general public, the general uh, congregation, the sisters and the brothers, because this question was asked twice previously, and Alhamdulillah, the same answer was given. But these individuals, they consist or persist to force their personal feelings and how they think things should be done. And they cause a lot of fitna in the um, community. So we like this shaykh to give them an advice, inshallah. Is it the same question? Yeah, the same question was asked, same answer, but they are not نصيحة انا قسمت المسؤوليات هذه the Sheikh, the Sheikh Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said, I advise myself and the brothers all together that they work together and yata'awun, that they assist one another with regards to this blessed masjid. The salat itself, the salat in congregation, if we don't work together, we'll never establish it. And likewise that we force ourselves to listen to and that we adhere to the rules placed by those who are responsible for the masjid. Even if we think that some of the decisions that are made are not good. Upon us is that we make our thoughts good about them. And we know that they were not forced to make such decisions except for matters that we don't know about. 
والقرار الذي الذي أشير إليه بالنسبة للأطفال هذا معمول به في كل البلاد الإسلامية. And as far as this decision that was referenced with regards to the children coming to the masjid, then this is something that is acted upon in all of the lands of the Muslims. عسى الله يبارك فيكم جميعا ويحفظكم يا أخوان. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bless all of you and to preserve you. جزاكم الله خير وبارك الله فيكم. And I also like to add one more point. Uh, my dear sisters or even brothers, whoever is going through this problem, so when you feel the pain of these rules and regulations, or when you, if you think that um, you are feeling the pain of it, believe me, those who put the rules, they feel even more deeper pain. They want you here. But because they have to maintain the order, believe me, whatever pain you feel because of these rules, Believe me, they, those brothers, Masha, the administration, when they put these rules, believe me, they cry and they feel even deeper pain. But they are forced to do it. Because if you are complaining that I'm not allowed to come, there may be 20 others who would say, if that person comes, or if those kids come, if those kids come we are not coming. That's the reality of the situation, my brothers and sisters. You have to understand. You have to understand. So we want you all here. We love you all here. But don't forget the goal of the masjid and the purpose of the masjid. And as Sheikh Hafizahullah, he advised you all to cooperate with the administration. And Jazakumullah khairan wa Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallah fikum. Any other question from the brothers from the... Naam, tafadar habibi, go ahead. La, alladhi waraak. the question and I said yeah. you want to know what's the right amount of time to wait from the moment that the clock says it's Iqama time for the Imam or for just general people right so like it's, it's time for Fajr you all have an appointed time for Fajr that time for Fajr has come should we pray right now or should we wait and who are we waiting for I need to understand that in the question so somebody else wants to come Somebody else to get there. Uh, no, just to get there. Yeah, right. Asalaamu Alaikum, Sheikh. You call the question. يعني هناك أوقات معينة للصلاة مثلا في الأذان ثم الإقامة. وفما هي الوقت المناسب بعد يعني بعد أن جاء وقت الإقامة إلى أن يقام الصلاة خصوصا إذا كنا ننتظر شخص أو شخصان حتى يأتوا. نعم. الوقت المناسب. نعم. Waiting for the people to come or waiting for the Imam to come. الوقت المناسب هو الالتزام بإمام المسجد كم بين الأذان والإقامة From the things that are good is that the people who are going to pray know the duration of time between the Adhan and the إقامة يعني لو كان الأذان يؤذن الساعة الواحدة مثلا ظهرا So if the Adhan for example was given at the one o'clock hour for Dhuhr, for example. والإقامة بعد ربع ساعة. And the إقامة is fifteen minutes after. معناها ستكون إقامة في تمام الساعة الحاد الواحدة وربع. Then the meaning of this is that the إقامة will be at one fifteen. لو تأخر الإمام دقيقتين أو ثلاث دقائق فلا إشكال يعني نراعي هذا الجانب. So if the Imam were to delay that for two minutes, three minutes, then there's no harm in this. Instead, this is something that he has the right. يراعي يعني he has the right to give concern to this matter. But even though that which is requested is that one not go past that time. And that instead he should try to establish the salat according to the time that was agreed upon, agreed upon and that has been announced. Because sometimes these three minutes or two minutes could adversely affect some people. Because the people, they have different circumstances. 
بعض الناس قد يترك أطفاله في السيارة وينزل يصلي. Some of the people might be leaving their children in the car and coming in to make salat. ويكون في قلق عليهم. And this will cause a, this, an unsettledness inside of him. والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يراعي هذه الجوانب. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to pay attention to these circumstances. فكان من شدة رحمته عليه الصلاة والسلام. So from the great level of his mercy alayhi salatu wassalam if he heard the crying of a child while in salat he would shorten the salat and shorten it its time or shorten it down out of mercy for the mother of this child because he knows that her heart will start to pour out over her child وهكذا المشايخ الفضلاء من أئمة المساجد لا بد أن يراعوا هذه الجوانب. And like this, the مشايخ الفضلاء and the imams of the masajid, it's necessary that they pay attention to these circumstances. لكن لو حصل تأخير يسير لا نخلق مشكلة في المسجد. But if a small delay occurred, then we shouldn't uh, 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 produce a great uh, current or a great problem in the masjid. والله تعالى. And Allah knows best. جزاكم الله خير بارك الله فيكم. And as you all know, my brothers and sisters, we started the question and answer sessions with what? With the sisters. And now, inshallah, we will end with the sisters as well. So I take one more question of the sisters, and then we will end and we will stop for Salatul Asr, inshallah. So the question is, sister wants to wear niqab or dress properly, but her parents do not, don't want her to do so. What is your advice? نعم الحجاب تقصد غطاء الرأس ولا غطاء الوجه مكتوب dress properly يعني لباس نعم إذا ما دمت أنك the fact that you mentioned ما دمت أنك ذكرت النقاب فكأنه مكتوب نعم نقاب and dress properly نعم أو الأمران نعم ال النقاب محل خلاف بين الفقهاء رحمهم الله uh, just a, uh, before the, the answer of the Sheikh, the Sheikh asked the question when they refer to dressing properly, are they talking about the niqab specifically or something else? And we directed that perhaps the question is specific about the niqab. So the Sheikh Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentioned that as far as the niqab, then this is the place of disagreement amongst the scholars. From them are those who say that it is obligatory upon the woman to cover her face. ومنهم من قال أنه لا يجب على المرأة أن تغطي وجهها. And from them are those who say that it is not obligatory upon the woman to cover her face. وكلهم متفقون على أن تغطية الوجه أفضل. And all of them are in agreement that covering the face is better. لكن إذا كانت الفتاة أو المرأة ترى وجوب تغطية الوجه. But if the woman or the young girl sees that it is or she holds the view. That it is obligatory upon her to cover her face. Then in this circumstance upon her is that she cover her face and she does not have to consider here the disapproval of the parents. Instead, she should try to clarify them with a good method in a good manner that, oh, my mother, oh, my father, your position with me is one that is great, but this is something that is from the rights of Allah and it is not permissible to disobey. I mean, there is no obedience for the creation if it entails the disobedience to the creator. But if it were to be a potential result of this or a, a, a more likely result of this, some harm that is greater than not doing it, then in that circumstance, she can accept the statement of the two parents. And this is because that from the qawaid and the sharia, the principles of the legislation is that if two mafasid, two 
bad things, tazahamat, they are competing against each other, then a person should undertake the lesser of the two mafasid. But if she were, and uh, now if she were to see or she were to deem that covering the face is preferable. Then in this circumstance, it is not permissible for her to cover her face if her father forbade her from doing so. And this is because obeying the parents, the father and the mother, is a faridah. It is an obligation. And it is not permissible to abandon the obligation for something that is preferable. And upon this noble sister is that she know a general point. And it is that the disapproval or the opposition of your parents to you in this matter is because of their extreme care for you and their worry and fear for you and that is that they understand that in this country or in these areas there might be certain difficulties that you might suffer uh, because of the wearing of the niqab in a way that is not hidden to you all so we don't so, so it's not that their opposition is because they don't love Islam instead they love Islam and they love these tenets and these outward manifestations of Islam but the fear is what has pushed them to this and Allah knows best and لعلنا نكتفي بهذا القدر من الأسئلة. And إن شاء الله now we will pause for adhan and salat al asr إن شاء الله تعالى. And I do see some pizzas in the back. I don't know. Ma sha Allah, some food in the back. Ma sha Allah. Ma sha Allah. So we're gonna call adhan now, right? إن شاء الله. إن شاء الله we'll have the the adhan and then in about ten minutes we're gonna have the salah inshallah gives the brothers some time who have to make wudu use the bathroom 10, 10, 10 minutes inshallah is good and you can have some